This is our first viewing. Complete total lie of Home Alone 2. No, first viewing in a while. Is, this is totally the first time we've seen this. Yeah, so are you okay there, Granny? You got I'm your playing. So, I have a cold. <laughs> there was an honest trailer for Batman <coughs> Forever that came out recently, and uh, they said, yep, this is definitely the worst movie I've seen 40 times. This is very much that movie. When I saw this, I didn't know what to think of it. Like, I wasn't sure. I'm like, is this good? Is this bad? I don't know, but I watched it like a million times still. Uh, just because I love the first Home Alone so much. And even now, like, I haven't seen it in a while the whole way through, but, like, I still have kind of a soft spot, even though I know it's not good. Home Alone I'll watch every year. I'll watch the commentary to oh, Home Alone, yeah, which is actually yeah, really good. Uh, no, it, it, it's a solid they, commentary. They, they make fun of Home Alone, too. All the people out there are like, you leave that movie alone. The people who made it make fun of it. <laughs> no, it's like Gremlins 2, where Joe Dante says, welcome to the most unnecessary of sequels. Or like Evil Dead 2, where they make fun they of it. So, yeah, they, they know. know. They have fun they with have it. They have a sense of humor, so grow the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. This is uh, second, third, 40th viewing of Home Alone uh, 2. But I haven't seen it in a while. John Hughes production. The film that could arguably kill what was left of his career. Actually, it totally did. Yeah, because they, they just wanted to make these I, over I and think over. I, after this, it was Baby's Day Out. Flubber, the masterpiece. Roger Gossinel! Right. Ah! Oh my god, really? <laughs> that makes way too much sense. Whoa. Even the music is like, here we go again, here we go again, go again, go again, go again. He is the one thing that's better in this film. Yes, Buzz he is so, so much, much better. better. He evolved as a character. Like, he's not a better person, but he's a better liar. The funny thing is, like, anybody with brothers, like, we recognize this instantly. As, like, yeah, it's just he's like, pulling the same shit we pull. I'm like, I'm just buying this horse okay. crap. And then the, this is a total brother moment, too. Eat that, you little trout sniffer. I want to do a side by side of the language between the two films, because in the first film, they're really harsh and really swearing, and, and it felt very real and genuine. And here's oh. trout sniffer and cheapskate. It's like, oh, cheapskate. Like, this, this is, is the Ninja the Turtles no. 2. They Ninja is, Turtles 2'd yeah. it. Now, this is the 90s now. We have to protect oh, children. Yes, but let's get this straight. We have to protect children by removing the language. You can but still beat the shit out of people. Literally creating a Saw-like funhouse. That's fine. Columbus is one of those people, I don't usually like his movies, but I respect the hell out of them, like how hard he's trying like he's and, a, and like the atmosphere. Uh, I love the production design in this film. Yeah, he has good atmosphere. Yeah. But geez, you guys give the worst gall darn wake-up call. Gall darn. Can he say that on Gall darn. <sighs> Board him, but put him in baggage. Oh, I love this radar screamer. There's only two air in O'Hare airspace. <laughs> I love Buzz always yeah. assuming this intellectual pose. Yeah. <laughs> Miami's awesome. I killed somebody. <laughs> it's freedom. No, it's fish. It's fishdom. Sick. You look positively charming and kind of cute with all the birds. Ah! Down the hall and to the left. Thanks. It would be great if Kevin just walked around the corner. You lied to me. This isn't where it is. You didn't come through on your promise. It wasn't. It was a weird promise to make to begin with. You promised me I would find the lobby. Who promises that? You don't even need to lie about it. It's <laughs> just what you do. Hello, I'm here to make your movie better. Oh, Tim, you are this movie. I don't have my wallet. My wallet's in my bag. Kevin was looking in my bag at the airport. He was looking for batteries. I'm putting the plot together as we're speaking. <laughs> so is the writer, John Hughes. So John Hughes is just like, but he doesn't have his wallet because he doesn't have Oh, if I take out the he and just replace it with I, there, I've got my plot. <laughs> Now, uh, let me just show you how to use the three seashells and we can get going. That was every kid's dream come true. I think most kids would wander around the room and it's like, it's a hotel room. But it's like, you open the fridge, it's like, damn! Cookies, jelly beans, yeah, like that's When he's having the ice cream on the bed and everything, I'm just like, yeah, no, I do this too. What bellhop does that? That seems kind of... Rob Schneider. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is the best part of both movies, the movie within the movie. I could smell you getting off the elevator. Yeah, well, I can hear your obvious ADR. <laughs> Again, this is what fascinates me. Oh, we can't have any sex. We can't have any swearing. Ah! <laughs> Blow this broad away right in front of you. <laughs> but at least you didn't say naughty words. I think this is when every adult in the audience was like, we're not coming back, are we? <laughs> this is the movie we're gonna get. <laughs> hey, the, I don't like the way those dolphins are positioned. <laughs> 
Ah, the days before Yelp. Uncle Rob lives here. If they're back from Paris, I'll drop in on them. You get that, audience? Okay. Uncle Rob is awesome. But he's also out of town, so he doesn't have time to deal with this little shit. That's why he's awesome. I don't know, I just don't feel like that connection. Like, oh, I really miss my family. It, it no, just, it, it's not earned. Because they did it in the first film, I think they feel that's what earned it. But it's not. This film has to earn it again, and we have to do it all again. And, like, they play this scene kind of too early. He hasn't even encountered anything that scary yet. Yeah. Have a lovely day. <laughs> Have a lovely, lovely day. day. God, it's amazing. Have a lovely Christmas <laughs> <laughs> with your pizza. <laughs> we gotta whack Jimmy the Squid. They run into snakes. Oh, that's why I remember snakes. <laughs> Something you never saw in the 90s. Yes. Never saw that. He was the first to ever do that. Doug, not. <laughs> I, I really did not like the 90s, now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Anything that said, no, I'm not doing this shit, I'm not doing yes, I'm not doing not, I'm not doing pratfalls, like Batman and, you know, Animaniacs and stuff, like anyone that said, no, we're not doing that shit, that was the good stuff. Have a lovely day! <laughs> Tim Curry for our movies that we have to watch is like a good luck charm. Any piece of shit is made ultimately better by Tim Curry. You know what? Tim Curry made it okay to laugh at stupid shit. Yeah. Because he still brought this dignity to it. Like, no, it's okay. You can laugh at how stupid this is. He brings dignity, credibility, but also an over-the-top comedic sensibility. He gives it his all. I, I legit like Schneider there, too. He's just like... Shame. <laughs> the shame. I got a gun in my pocket. I got a gun in my pocket. There was kind of this... Oh. <laughs> the other one is like, we're gonna do all the things he did to us. We're gonna hit him on the head with a bucket and everything. It's like, I'm gonna fucking shoot you in the head. Aw, oh, sweet. It's Uncle Rob's place. Mom! Have you heard the good news? Jesus saves. Oh no, I'm in Columbus's other film, Adventures in Babysitting. <laughs> That movie's fucking amazing. <laughs> scary out there. Ain't much better with hey, kid. <laughs> I always feel kind of bad for that cab driver. It's like he has low wow. enough self-esteem to know yeah. he's not very good looking. The kid is scared by him because he's a little shit. And it's like, I feel really bad for that cab driver. No, kid, I'm a gentle giant. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. There is nothing scary about her. She is not scary at all. If she came out and be like, hi, how you doing that bird trick? <laughs> I was afraid of getting my heart broken again. No, this, this makes, makes sense. no sense. Please explain this leap from being dumped to living in the dump. It's like if the dude from the first movie was like, yeah, my son never talks to me, so now I live in the bell tower and shoot people. Like, wait, how did you get there? And then I rode across on the Titanic, and then I came here riding on the back of a T-Rex, and then Kevin McAllister is all of a sudden like, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> It's not a complex series of socio-economical issues or the fact that I've got a severe mental illness. Nope, me heart. Now that it's like, you know, it's not about me anymore or getting come up into the thing. It's for the kids. I gotta fight yeah. for the kids. So I'm not gonna call the cops, tell them to show up to this place and arrest their asses. I'm still gonna put all these stupid little jokes together. <laughs> Repeat the score, repeat the score, repeat, doing repeat, it again. Here we go again! Rinse, wash, repeat! Um, yeah, so I'm just saying this now. Uncle Rob's gonna come home and be really pissed. Madam, there are hundreds of parasites out there. There is a bird lady who is living out there feeding birds because her heart was broken. Broken, I ask you. <laughs> Dangerous! Her emotional baggage is staggering. <laughs> she carries around birdseed. It's very dangerous. It gets in your eye. It doesn't sound very funny, but if she was to throw it on two dim-witted burglars, oh, the aren't it. <laughs> doesn't empty the register! God! <laughs> oh god! You can see his brain! <laughs> <laughs> I, this is my favorite scene. It's so it's so awful. lazy. It's so blatant. It's so painful. But it's <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't work if there was a pong or clay. No, but the fact that, that, real, that, that brick it feels though. so hard. <laughs> it's so not Home Alone. That's what's so strange about it. It's like, wouldn't it be funny at Home Alone? There's no ingenious. It's just hitting a guy with a brick. You know what? If that was all the trap. <laughs> I would have a strange respect for this. Right into a bed of nails. <laughs> <laughs> like from 
Mortal Kombat, yeah. here's just all these fears of fatality. <laughs> What? Well, the last thing I just did, I clearly shouldn't look down at the ground. Uh, the setting in this makes it even more so. Like, the first one was such a nice home, and this one, it's like a horror movie. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I'll get him! <laughs> For some reason, that movie. I'll get him! <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> There's just enough where it's like, okay, it's like this isn't good. But as a little kid, I would like watching this over and over. For, like these, I do, I do find these this. couple of laughs. I don't think anything's better, but there's a couple of things where it's like, okay, that got a laugh. The brick is the high water mark, and that's where it starts. Yeah. Have you had enough pain? Never. It's one of my favorite memes. Oh man, now they got Streisand noses. The brick kid. Pong ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they kill him. That would've been amazing. Merry Christmas. I love watching you burn. Ha! Ah! Ah, the city of New York has failed you, Kevin. <laughs> it wants you dead. Just two skeletons left. Like critters, like when the ball yeah. goes over somebody, it's just these skeletons. And the boys at the NYPD choir were singing, <laughs> go away, bay. Put yourself in your kid's shoes. Where would you go? Me? I'd probably be lying dead in a gutter somewhere. But Kevin, Probably be horrifically Kevin's torturing a <laughs> couple of people. I'd be dead in the gutter somewhere, but Kevin, he'd be making other people dead in the gutter. I'm assuming right at this very moment he's there when <laughs> nobody else would be there. If it isn't possible, I can see all of them. Can I just see my mother? I'll never want another thing as long as I live. I just want my mother. You're school pageanting this! I have to do like five Nickelodeon appearances and like 12 choice awards and I don't it's have like... time to memorize all these lines. Do I apologize for this? It was kind of your fault? I don't know, this is this is a weird one. If Kevin hadn't screwed up in the first place, again. Why isn't there a buzz alone? <laughs> Him and his girlfriend, Buzz, no, it, who is Buzz actually alone. named Wolf. I would also go with Home Buzz. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Who are you? And that's when Kevin realized she has Alzheimer's. <laughs> and here's my gift to you. It's just a pile of bird shit. It's gold. <laughs> Here we go again. The movie just like rushes itself out. Like, all right, parents, you're free. Go, go. just okay. go. Yeah, no, I think Buzz is the only thing that's better in this room. He improved with age, like a fine wine. Yes. It's about how I remember it. It's not good, but there's enough that I sort of have a soft spot for it. It's like Ghostbusters 2. I know it's bad. I know it's a sequel. There's a couple things where I'm like, okay, that was kind of worth it. That was a little fun. Just but... like Ghostbusters 2 had Peter McNichols as Yadosh. This one has Tim Curry. Yeah. Curry. There it is, guys. Uh, we will see you at the next one. Later. Merry Christmas. I got a gun in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs>